secret meetings. The national government had a drill it, mine it, frack it agenda. We weren't prepared for an oil spill. The campaign just grew exponentially. Days of oil and gas exploration off New Zealand's coast are over. Today we are announcing that the government will end new offshore oil exploration permits in New Zealand. Well, it's a historic announcement. It's the end of offshore oil exploration permits. National was doing everything they could to attract oil companies to New Zealand, lavish hosting of events, subsidies, tax breaks, opening up vast swarms of our ocean to oil companies. They even opened up the Maui's Dolphin Sanctuary when there are only dozens of dolphins left on the entire planet for oil drilling and oil exploration. My question is to the Minister of Energy. For years we'd been opposing National's pollution oil agenda in Parliament. We've been using question time, we'd been uncovering scandals. Communities all around the country were mobilising against oil exploration and deep sea oil drilling because they knew that this is old world stuff and we've got to turn to the new world, we've got to turn to a better way of living. The arena for me was a real foundational point. We'd seen oil spills on TV, but this was something here. It was something you could see, you could touch, you could smell. People in hazmat suits cleaning up oil blobs off the beaches. You could see dead birds in buckets and volunteers cleaning the birds. It's left such a strong imprint on my mind. I remember there was a man fishing over one of the bridges near the sea and we went to talk to him and say, you know, this is signs have been put up to say, to tell people to stop fishing and he said, this is how I feed my family. Um, and that just broke my heart because that's essentially one of the biggest impacts that it had. I remember being outraged at the same time Kiwis were picking up oil blobs off those beaches, the national government was having secret meetings with oil companies trying to entice them down to drill deep off our coasts. Will he recommend returning the Crown Minerals Amendment Bill to the Select Committee so that the public can have a say on the so-called Anadarko Amendment? If not, why not? I remember being there when National put Parliament into urgency over Easter to ram through the Anadarko Amendment to criminalise protest activity at sea. At the same time as National was ramming through the Anadarko Amendment, there were spontaneous protests occurring. So I had this experience where I was railing against it in Parliament, rushing down to Oriental Bay in Wellington to speak at a protest, then rushed back to Parliament to vote against the Anadarko Amendment. I'm really proud of my friends who placed themselves in the water, directly opposing that piece of legislation which wasn't going to let people um, peacefully resist in the water in front of um, oil explorers. And so that bill was a direct assault on peaceful resistance. Over time what we saw was the movement just grow, more groups were forming, we saw the opinion polls turn around in favour of protecting our oceans from deep sea oil drilling. Look, I don't think we would have got here today with a historic end for oil exploration if we hadn't been persistent, if people hadn't worked at this for years and years. It's a massive win for the price that people have paid to be on the front line of this resistance and I feel that they are vindicated in this, that their leadership and their resistance has played a big part in bringing us to this essential and necessary decision. I don't think you would have seen an end to offshore exploration if the Greens weren't there. You wouldn't have even seen climate change on the political agenda if the Greens hadn't been there decades ago. One of the funnest points of my career was launching a policy underwater during the 2011 election at Mount Monganui. It was great to be diving underwater and coming out of the water and talking to all the journalists. I'm really proud of Te Whanau Apanui who mobilised against Petrobras um, and particularly the nannies up and down uh, the east coast in Te Whanau who put signs out on their roadside telling Petrobras to stop off. So I am convinced that with people power coming together, grassroots driven community movements all around the country, working together, supporting each other, coming together against global big companies, big profit and big oil, I am convinced that this is the only way that we can make real change and that those of us in positions of power will have to listen to the leadership on the ground. There's a favourite quote I have from Margaret Mead which is, never doubt a small group of people can change the world. Indeed it's the only thing it ever has and that's so true.